Okay, so um, in this, uh, we're going to do frictions and inclines. Um, it's a pretty straightforward problem as far as the setup goes. Is we have a box sitting on an incline, and we're asking uh, what um, it has some mass m, and we're asking as it goes down here, what's its acceleration? A um, couple of things we're given. We're given the angle, which is 25 degrees. We're given the kinetic friction, which is 0 0.19, and that's about it. Um, so the first thing we do in any of these problems, again, as, as, I've, as I've at least in my class been telling us, um, is that we, uh, we draw a free body diagram. So um, that's the only way we can actually get to solving these problems. So I'm going to draw the, the crate kind of in the situation that's in. All right, there's our crate. And let's start just looking at the forces. First one is always easy. We're on Earth. We have gravity. Gravity points straight down always, always, always. Um, also, we know that the actual box is not going through uh, the incline. And so if it's not going through the incline, it means something's pushing up on it to basically keep it from getting through there. That, of course, is our normal force. Okay, so normal force. Normal force is always points normal or perpendicular to the actual surface. Okay, so the surface is going this way. It's pointing perpendicular to that. The last thing we have is friction. Okay, we always have friction. We've been ignoring it up until now, um, but of course it always exists. It's it's uh, it's why we can't just go, um, you know, have things roll for an infinite amount of time and things like this. Um, and so. Uh, in this case, we're dealing with kinetic friction because the, the box is actually moving. Um, now, one thing we always have to try to figure out with friction is what direction we actually want the friction to be going, what direction the friction should be written down as. Um, kinetic friction actually is one of the easier ones, and that kinetic friction always opposes the motion. Um, so if, we're, if the box is sliding this way, and if we know anything about how things slide, they tend to slide downhill. If the box is sliding downhill, then the kinetic friction has to be going uphill. Okay or look like that. So there's our kinetic friction. Okay, um, we're going to break into, uh, we're, we're going to get into the components of our forces in just a second. Before we do that though, uh, I want to make a couple of comments. First is that on these, uh, all these, um, these angle problems, these ones where we're on inclines, uh, we always set up our axes a little funny where we do this X axis that goes along the incline and a y-axis that goes perpendicular. And the reason we do that is actually pretty obvious when you see this free body diagram. What we're trying to do is we're trying to make it so that we have to break as few things into components as possible. Uh, basically save ourselves a lot of work. Uh, if you notice, this, the, the friction goes along the x-axis. The normal force goes along the y-axis. So two out of our three forces here are actually going along the axes that we've set up. And that's basically why we do these axes, okay? Um, the only one, of course, that's kind of not agreeing with us and not helping us out is this, uh, the, is the force of gravity. Um, and so that's the one that we are actually going to have to break into components. Um, I'll show those here. There's your y component, there's your x component. So that's FG Y. This is FG X. Okay, again, that's going along the X, that's going along the Y. Those two components are what make up gravity. And of course, the one kind of um, neat thing about, uh, about these problems is that it just so happens that this angle is also theta. So if this angle is theta, this is the same angle theta. So it's at 25 degrees. And that just happens to be how the, the math actually works out. If you if you want to know why that happens, either come and see uh, Professor Crawford or I, or uh, just look in the book. They actually explain it pretty well in there. Okay, now we're actually ready to, to do our free, um, to, to do our, our Newton's laws. Um, of course, we have two Newton's laws. We have that F net is equal to MA um, in X and Y. So the question is, well, which one do I do first? Well, we know we want to find out something about the acceleration. This thing is only going to be accelerating in the X direction. It's only actually going to be moving in the X direction. So let's start everything with the X direction. Maybe we'll get lucky and we don't have to do the Y direction. Although I think you probably know by now that that's not actually going to be the case. So F net X is equal to F G X minus f k. There are only two things that are going in the x direction. f k is going in the x direction and f g x is going in the x direction. 
Um, the FGX is pointing in the positive X. Okay, maybe we get our move our axes down here just so we can see it a little bit better. Positive X, all right. And FK is moving in the negative X. That's why I have that minus sign there. Okay, and that's just going to be equal to mass times the acceleration in the x direction because there's no other forces. Those are the only two that are moving in the x. Everything else is in the y. Okay, um, that's good. Uh, this is actually what we're trying to find, this ax. Um, one thing we can try to see is, was well, there anything we can kind of do to, to make these, um, to, to kind of work this a little further? Uh, well, one thing is we know the format for kinetic friction. Um, if you looked in your book, kinetic friction is always just equal to mu k times the normal force. Okay, so we'll be able to get rid of that. We also actually know what FGX is. FGX, just by looking at the, the basically the trigonometry of this, trigonometry, um, we can see that this is always equal to FG uh, sine of theta. And I always mess up. It's sine, of course, because it's the opposite one. So that's FG sine theta. Um, and so we can rewrite these guys as FG sine of theta minus, and then there's our mu k Fn is equal to mass times acceleration, extraction. Okay. Um, we can even further simplify this in that we always actually know what Fg is. Fg is always just mass times g, um, so mg sine theta minus mu k Fn is equal to mass times acceleration. Now let's see where we are. Maybe we got lucky. Maybe we have enough equations. This one equation will do everything for us. Let's see what our knowns are. Well, we know theta. We know g. We know mu k. All right. But there are a lot of things we don't know. We don't know the mass. All right. We don't know the, the normal force. Again, we don't know the mass. And we don't know x. So we've got three unknowns um, and only one equation. That's, that's not going to work. In fact, that's, that's a pretty, pretty bad start. Um, so uh, this, that's as much as we can do in the x direction. We're kind of done uh, solving for that. Let's go ahead and go to the y direction and see if we can get any information there. So f net y now. Let's look at all the forces in the y direction. We have the normal force and the y component of gravity. And that's it. Again, no other forces in this. So Fn, again, that's in the positive y direction. It's pointing up, which is what we called our positive y. And then we do mi minus Fgy, since that's going down. Okay, And then that, again, is equal to mass times the acceleration in the y direction. One nice thing about the acceleration in the y direction, we know that our box actually isn't moving in the y direction at all. It's only sliding down the slope. It's not moving up and down. It's not flying up in the air or bearing itself into uh, the slope itself. And so we know that this acceleration in the y is actually equal to zero. So this whole term is equal to zero. Or the other way to write that is that Fn is equal to Fgy. Well, that's nice. And even nicer is that we actually know what Fgy is. Um, it's just fg cosine of theta. We can even go one step further. That's actually fg is always mg, though we get cosine of theta there. So fn is actually equal to mg cosine of theta. Now let's see if we can use this information we have back in this equation and see if that'll help us out at all. So we have just rewriting this equation m g sine of theta, okay, minus mu k fn, but now I'm actually going to plug in for fn right here, okay, here's fn, here's fn, fn is just equal to mg cosine theta, so m g cosine of theta, and that's equal to mass times acceleration in the x direction. Now notice something very nice, in every single one of these terms, there are, there are two terms being added here and one term over here. In every one of them, we have an m, an m, and an m. If I divide by m on this side, this goes away. And, if, and it'll divide out this m and this m. Because it's in every single one of those, um, those terms, then it goes completely away. So we can get rid of all our m. We don't actually need to know the mass for this problem, which is nice. So then we just end up with g sine theta minus mu k g cosine of theta is equal to the acceleration and the extraction. 
Now let's look at what we know. We know G, we know theta, we know mu K, we know G, we know theta, and we don't know AX. One equation, one unknown. We're done with the problem. We can actually find the acceleration. We plug in 9.8, we plug in our thetas, and so on, we get it done. I'm not gonna do that. You can go ahead and do that yourself and 